Hey, I'm back in Atosha. This is the second um, second time here in two weeks. And since I think I got pretty good photos last time, I decided I want to do something stupid this time. And uh, I put a two time extender on the 500 millimeter F4 lens. This is version one of the lens, but it's actually extender version three. So it's supposed to be better. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of lens. A thousand millimeters is probably too much <laughs> in most cases. But yeah, let's do something stupid. The entire time in Atosha, four days, I'm just gonna use this setup. But first, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Not only are there some incredible templates to help you make your website look ultra professional, but there are so many tools to help you build a strong online business. There's blogging tools, there's e-commerce integration, and there's even a way to create a members only section to your website. To get you started, head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. I'm going to warn you in advance. Today's video is almost all voiceover. With a group of participants and trying to keep quiet on game drives, it's just hard to vlog and work at the same time. On our first game drive, I struggled at a thousand. At first, it wasn't the lens fault. The wildlife kind of found itself in boring scenes or lights. Okay, a little of it was the lens's fault. I mean, sometimes it's just too much lens. Eventually though, we spotted some lions licking their wounds after a fight. Here, a thousand millimeters gives a close-up full of character. But yeah, sometimes it was just a bit too much. I think a thousand millimeters was too much lens. To the eye, this is what it looked like. Now this is the scene at a thousand millimeters. It's a lot of lens. But that said, a clever photographer would say this lens opens up a world of new images. I'm just not that clever. We're back. <laughs> my lens is so dusty. Oh my god. We're back um, uh, in camp. We've gone on three different game drives and I think I've got some good photos with this actually. I, I'm actually quite enjoying having the reach. Uh, the extender is a little bit slow and when i say a little bit slow it, it takes a solid 30 seconds to find the focus the first time you can't just auto focus you can't just see something and then bam focuses it runs through the entire um, focus wheel and then eventually finally comes across what it wants to find once it's found it it kind of readjusts really quickly it doesn't chase through everything but I would say that if the animals aren't like racing and you need to grab a shot super quick, it's fine. Like lions on the side of the road, we've been able to grab pretty, you know, I've never had an issue with the focus. The two time extender is not fast, but the more I get used to it, the more comfortable I am. That afternoon, we cruised pretty unsuccessfully looking for wildlife. Then, elephants. Most of the time, a thousand millimeters was definitely too long for an entire elephant. But it allows opportunities like this to fill the entire frame. These images are special. And honestly, the narrow focus forces me to think so much more about the image. It's not about the animal anymore. It's about the photo. It's the composition. We continued into the heart of the park as the light started to fall and had another brilliant sighting. Another pride of young lions roadside soaking up the last of the day's sun. With the lions a mere five meters away, I had no choice but to get really tight and really carefully craft a portrait of these phenomenal cats. The following morning, we were treated with something very helpful to my photo challenge. Animals that were just a little bit farther away. This rhino out in the sunrise. Or the secretary bird delivering perfectly harvested twigs for their nest. 
or this oryx and their baby. Later, we moved east in Atosha to a more rugged Halali camp. This dusty landscape is home to the leopard I spotted a couple weeks ago. So we search. We don't find the leopard, but we find a giraffe so close that I couldn't help but clip its ear. And though the thousand millimeters is a bit restrictive, I find myself more and more comfortable with the lens and more and more able to see the focal length before holding it to my eye. An underrated skill of a great photographer is the ability to see the world as their lens does. At the start of this week, I told myself I might photograph the last two days of safari at a much more normal 500 millimeters. But now, I'm addicted to the distance. Okay, it's our last game drive this morning. Actually, we're heading back to Vintook. And I have to say, one, I haven't hated the 1,000 millimeter more as much as I thought I would. <laughs> it's actually been really nice, especially on really long distance shots. Even things like an ostrich can look really, really cool. Uh, and I think it kind of looks sharper than I thought on the back of the camera But when we get to Windhoek, we'll check sharpness and check out some of these images I'm definitely getting a little bit of lens envy with others We've got an animal a little bit too close to us and I'm thinking man I wish I had 500 millimeters so it's a little bit of reverse lens envy going on but making it work on the way out of the park I started to worry are these images sharp? Am I gonna find out that they're all soft? My worries flipped to excitement as we had a couple more sightings. A pair of rhinos grazing, and that oh-so-buttery boca. A lonely elephant on the move. And maybe the most spectacular sighting of the entire month in Namibia. An African wildcat. No, that's not a house cat. Okay, we're back in Vintook and excuse the mess. Yeah, I know it's a disaster, but I'm packing and everything's covered in sand. I want to check the sharpness of these images because you might probably not, re no, you'll definitely not remember this video, but I did a video back when Canon had the extender version one and it was the 1.4 and I tested it in, uh, in the Florida Keys or the Everglades or something like that. And it was terrible. Everything came out soft and I just assumed that everything was going to come out soft here, too So uh, on the back of the camera it seemed better and people have been telling me that this version this version 3 of the extender is much better I've also been told that when you use an extender with a mirrorless camera for some reason it's better man I took a lot of photos on this trip so <laughs> It's a funny thing because when I was using this lens, I just couldn't capture everything because it was too long of a lens. So this lion photo, this is uh, a lion and this is a thousand millimeters right by the road. ISO 1600, one over 500th second. When you're shooting one over 500th, that's not ideal. You usually want to be double your shutter speed. So let's zoom in and check on this. And actually, wow, that's really sharp. I'm actually in shock right now. I was like half expecting everything to be out of focus, so maybe it was just lucky. Let's keep digging through some more of these lions. I thought I got closer to one. Maybe later on. Let's let's just click on let's click on this lion here. Again, yeah, like there's no issue at all with the sharpness. That's a hundred percent. Wow, that's super super sharp. And I'm now uh, hoping that they're all like this. Let's click on this ostrich dude. I think I got focus on his head. Yeah, again, sharp. Wow, definitely better than the older versions. And the lion, later in the day. This is corner sharpness, because the eye was where I focused, so. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. 
It's super, super, super sharp. You can even see the details on the bug in his eye. Yeah, so um, maybe I've just demystified, mythified, demythified. <laughs> I've demythed the extender for myself because I was always adamant against using it, uh, extenders because they kill the sharpness. But this doesn't seem like it did. Um, I don't think I would go a thousand millimeters again. That was a little bit too much. But now maybe I'm thinking that instead of needing to get like uh, a 600 millimeter lens, I just need a 400 millimeter f2.8 or a 300 millimeter f2.8 or something like that it, and save some money with the extender. So yeah, eye opening experience and sharp eyes on the animals, which I'm stoked about. That is it for Namibia. I'm off to home. I'm off home and I'm just like, I'm over the moon. So I'll see you from home. Peace.